Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back or welcome to the channel if this is your first time tuning in. And if you're over here on my channel because Viv Mom recommended my channel to you, thank you so much for coming over to my channel, watching my videos. And if you have subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do so by clicking the red subscribe button below this video. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you two reviews. Yes, two reviews again. And I'm going to be sharing with you my review of the Mood Exclusive Floral Dreams Cotton Sateen. So this is a fabric that was sponsored to me by Mood Fabrics in exchange for a blog post. And I wrote up the, the blog post and you can go over to my blog. I put the link in the description box below. You can head over and read the full review um, in blog format if you would like to do that as well. So this particular fabric is Oh, it's such a wonderful fabric. So uh, for those of you who have tuned in to my video of the Cityscapes fabric, you know how much I love that fabric. It was a lightweight, beautiful, mesmerized uh, fabric. Um, and it also had a light sheen to it. It was similar to a uh, cotton sateen. It has some scratch in it as well. Um, I'll put the link to that video up in uh, iCard above and you can go ahead and check that out as well. But uh, my point is, is I really love that fabric so much so that I didn't think that I would love um, another fabric as much as that one. Well, I've been pleasantly, pleasantly surprised that this uh, cotton sateen fabric that I uh, got from Mood Fabrics is also one of my favorites. And I'm going to give my review of the fabric and tell you why. Um, the second review that I'm going to be doing is of the McCall's M7253, which is a pleated skirt pattern. It's an outer print pattern. However, you can purchase it on eBay and Amazon. Um, I had a browse on both of those sites before making this video to see if it is available and it is available. You can also... Um, uh, find reviews on uh, patternreview.com of this and you can see the different makes that people have made and um, the different variations that people have made as well. Um, let me show you the pattern. So this is the pattern here that I used and it has six different variations and most of the the variations are all just uh, length variations. However, you can make a, a skirt without a waistband and then there's a pattern for a waistband as well. And then um, as you can see also, you can make uh, two different variations where there's a, a band, a hem band, which is also really cute. So you do have some options there and I'm gonna tell you the view that I chose, the size that I selected and everything that I liked about the pattern after I give my review of the fabric. So the fabric is a 90, 3% or I think it's 98%. If I am wrong, I will make sure that I correct that in the video. Um, but it has, um, it's 98% cotton or something like that, or 97% cotton and 3% elastane, which means that this fabric does have some scratch on the cross grain. And because of that, if you are cutting on the bias, your fabric is going to be a little bit extra stretchy. <laughs> so you need to uh, keep that in mind. And so uh, I did go into the project with a few things in mind. Uh, specifically, um, I knew that I wanted to use uh, something like a pattern that had some uh, structure and some uh, stability because I knew that the fabric was pretty sturdy and, and had structure to it as well, even though it does stretch. Um, it does have a stiff drape. And so I wanted to have something that um, would accommodate that in, you know, in a pattern. And so, like I said, it has a stiff drape and it also has a soft hand. And because it is a cotton sateen, it does have a slight shine to it. Um, it's a wonderful fabric. It really is. And um, also about the color scheme of the fabric. I love the color scheme of this fabric. It um, 
it's a floral fabric on a navy blue background and the florals are uh, you have some white floral details uh, in the fabric as well as um, like a lilac type color or a purple color, if you will. There's a rustic orange color, uh, some tan flowers in there. So there's a balance between uh, some light and some dark colors, which uh, I have told you all before. That's kind of my jam. That's, that's something that I really like in the floral. I really like uh, the contrast like in, in colors, like uh, when I have a hue uh, like a slightly um, bright hue with a slightly dark darker hue in the same print that's just something that I really like and I feel like uh, when those prints are uh, made uh, it's it's just it, it it's very complimentary I feel like so I didn't have any trouble sewing this particular pattern uh, it's a very easy pattern and the fabric is because it's so sturdy and it has like that stiff drape, like I mentioned, um, it sews really well and it's excellent for beginners. This is a fabric that is excellent for beginners. However, I would caution you because it has a stretch in it, you want to make sure that you choose a pattern that would accommodate this fabric. So I chose, uh, like I said, the McCall's M7253 pattern. And this particular pattern um, has six different variations. As I mentioned before, you can do, uh, there's two variations where you can, three, I'm sorry, there are three variations where you can uh, make a pleated skirt without a waistband. And then there are three variations where you can make a pleated skirt with a waistband. I chose to make view D, which is the one that the model is wearing, and that has a waistband. There are about six pleats in the front. I believe it's like six pleats in the front and six in the back. Um, the pleats were very easy. The instructions are so concise, accurate, and readable. They are wonderful instructions. So that's one of the reasons why I said um, a beginner would have a field day with this because it's very straightforward. Um, the lines on the pattern for the front and the back for the pleats are very clear and like I said they're very accurate I've had in the past where I've made pleated skirts where the instructions don't really tell you how to uh, accurately put the pleats together now I'm at a stage in my sewing where I don't really need the instructions however the instructions are always appreciated just in case you know you come up against a problem and I have found that those instructions are really great simple straightforward now in terms of the waistband um, as i mentioned before you want to make sure that you choose a pattern that will accommodate your fabric especially if you're working with a stretch fabric now because the waistband is cut on bias and the top of the skirt as well is cut on a bias um, you need to pay particular attention to that if you decide to choose a fabric with stretch. Now, this particular pattern calls for fabrics such as broadcloth, cotton blends, poplar, and sateen. Um, so a cotton stretch sateen, uh, which I chose to work with, uh, like I said, you're going to be working with stretch. And so you want to make sure that you are um, aware of that going into the project and uh, making all the necessary adjustments so that you don't have, you know, have a, a waistband that is one or two sizes bigger than what you intended to sew. So because I went into the project you know, having that knowledge, oh yes, this is definitely going to be um, slightly bigger. I decided to do a mock-up. And so my mock-up for that particular garment, I chose a size 16 and it just so happened that that size was wonderful. I didn't have to make any adjustments. Um, the waistband fit really great and I didn't have to worry about uh, you doing any kind of sizing or grading or anything like that. Um, I will say this though, um, I did choose a size that was, um, 
smaller than my waist measurements because I was working with the cotton um, sateen, the stretch sateen, and I didn't want to have a waistband that was bigger. And so I went with a size smaller. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're working with a cotton stretch sateen that you might have to do some adjustments. And at the very least, I would say, make a mock-up, even if it's not a full mock-up of the entire dress, make a mock-up of at least the waistband so you can get an idea of how it's supposed to fit around your waist because you don't want it to be slipping and sliding and, you know, moving uh, down past your waist while you're walking. So if I haven't done so already, I'll make sure that I include pictures throughout the rest of the video so you can see what my garment turned out to look like. Um, the pattern, I really don't have much to say about the pattern. You're just working with four pattern pieces if you choose, uh, variation D, the one that I chose. So there are two pieces for the waistband. So you have the waistband front and the waistband back. The waistband front is cut on fold and the waistband back is cut out twice because the zipper, there's a invisible zipper that you're going to place at the back of the garment as well as uh, hook and eyes as well. And then you have the skirt front and the skirt back. So you don't, there's, there are, you're not working with a lot of pieces um, and the pleats, like I said, beginners can do it and it's not a problem. The only thing that I wish that this pattern include were pockets. I felt like um, because of the way in which the pattern was designed and how the pleats were designed, you can actually have sightseeing pockets. And I was really disappointed and surprised that they didn't come with sightseeing pockets because the pleats would not interfere with the pocket space at all. So I think in the future, I might draft a, a pocket pattern so that I can put um, a pocket pattern in my garment. But other than that, um, this is a beautiful pattern and I'm excited to make more variations, especially the variations with the hem band. Now, even though I didn't have any issues sewing this up, I do want to go ahead and mention a few things here just in case you decide to also choose a cotton sateen. So as I mentioned before with the cotton sateen fabric, you are going to get um, a little bit stretch um, with your fabric and with your waistband. You can't really see the stretch here, but um, it does stretch a little bit. And um, because of that, you wanna make sure and pay close attention of, of how you sew your pleats. Now, I decided to actually top stitch my pleats down. The directions does not tell you to do that, but I did that as a style choice. I felt like it would look really good for the style that I was going for. Now, because I stitched these down in place, I had to make sure that I paid close attention to um, how I was guiding my needle over the, um, over the pleats so that I didn't stretch it out of place and have a bubble in the pleat. So um, just keep that in mind as well, that that is something that you're going to have to pay attention to so that you don't get those bubbles in the pleats if you decide to use a cotton sateen and top stitch your pleats in place. So yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful fabric. I love the fabric. I love the color schemes and I'm so glad that I chose this McCall's M7253 pattern to go with this particular fabric. Now, on my mannequin, you're going to see that um, I have the same fabric and this fabric was not sponsored, but I actually purchased this fabric and I purchased it with the intentions of making a two piece um, skirt and blouse uh, to to be able to wear with the skirt. And when making two pieces, it's just, there's always like a chance that, you know, you might fail in, <laughs> in um, getting the style that you want. It's really tricky to get the, um, the right style when you're making two pieces. And so I was a little bit nervous about, um, trying to go for a two piece, but I decided to do it anyway. And so I purchased two yards of this. And for the first yard of this, I made, um, a gathered, a gathered neckline top. 
and I'll talk more about this pattern, the pattern that I use, and I'll talk more about what I did. You'll see a video on me making this and, um, and all the things that I did to achieve this look for the top as well. Um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out as well. However, one of the reasons why I want to give a separate review of this is because this is a totally different fabric. So even though the print is the same, the fabric is a vol. And so it's a very light weight, almost like a cotton lawn um, type fabric. And um, it's a little bit um, transparent as well. So this I'm going to give a separate review of so that you'll know more about this fabric here and what I did to achieve the look that you see in my pictures. So I'm really pleased with how the skirt turned out. If you have any questions about this particular pattern um, that I didn't cover in this video, please make sure that you leave that in the comment section below. And if you've made this particular pattern and you had a successful turnout, or if you didn't have a successful turnout, let me know in the comment section below. And I can't wait to hear from you all soon. And let me show you real quickly before I tune out the next mood project that I'm working on. This is something that I'm working on this week and I'm hoping to get the video out for that really soon. So let me show you what I'm working so on. So this is the fabric that I'm working with this week. It is a uh, coral and um, pink and orange and navy blue uh, dandelion fabric that was also sponsored to me by um, Mood Fabrics. And I'm excited to work with this. I finally, uh, last week I spent most of uh, last week uh, searching for a pattern for it and um, making adjustments to the pattern and doing a mock-up and all that good stuff. And so this week I am finally um, taking steps to making the garment. I have two yards of this and I'm going to try to squeeze out another matching set with the two yards. So that's what's coming up. I can't wait to share with you all my finished uh, makes of that. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts about my Floral Dreams Cotton Satine two-piece matching set. All right, so until next time, everyone, stay creative.